Italian master Gianni Toso is known for his delicate flamework glass flowers like this one. We're going to watch him make a simpler version of one of these flowers so we can see how it's done. Flameworking is done using a special torch. Unlike the Bunsen burner you may remember from chemistry class, a glassworking torch achieves a hotter flame by adding oxygen to the fuel mixture. Today's glassworking torches are fueled by natural gas or propane. Pure oxygen is added to raise the temperature of the flame. Gianni's setup for this demonstration is a fairly typical one. In front of him is his torch. Gas and oxygen are delivered to the torch through hoses. He can control the amount of each using the knobs on the top of the torch. You will see him adjusting the knobs as he works in order to vary the size and temperature of the flame. His glass comes in the form of the colored rods on the table in front of him. These are called canes and he will melt and shape them in the torch. Glass canes can be used to make everything from simple beads to elaborate glass sculptures. Also in front of Gianni is a small oven that American glass artists call a garage. As he finishes sections of his flower, Gianni will put them in the garage to hold them at the proper temperature while he works on the next section. If he didn't do that, the glass would cool too quickly and would shatter before he could finish the flower. After lighting the gas, Gianni opens the oxygen valve. You can see the difference in the flame immediately. The first step is to create the stem of the flower. Johnny melts the end of a green rod into a ball, then attaches a piece of clear rod to it as a handle. By pulling the handle and the green rod apart, he stretches the ball into a thin rod. This is called pulling a stringer. The stringer will be the stem of the flower. He next melts a ball of red onto the end of the stem to form the base of the flower. A red stringer is then used to make the stamens of the flower. Although the end of the rod in his hand is clear, it is actually fused to a short piece of red close to the torch. The petals are made by melting the end of a red rod into a ball, then flattening it with tweezers. A clear rod is attached to the petal and it is separated from the red rod. This is similar to how a glass blower would transfer a vessel to a punty. The petal is then fused to the base of the flower with a very narrow flame on the torch. Gianni works his way around the flower, creating each petal, then fusing it to the base. After each petal is attached, the flower is put back in the garage to hold it at the proper temperature. Gianni's family has been creating glass in Murano, Italy for 700 years. Gianni himself started working in a glass factory at the age of 10, laboring up to 12 hours a day feeding wood to the factory's furnace. His salary was a dollar a week. 
At the age of 14, he was accepted into the Fine Arts Academy on the island of Murano, where he studied for seven years, at the same time continuing to work in the glass factories. At the age of 23, he set up his own flameworking studio, having taught himself how to do flamework because it wasn't taught at the factories. When the flower is finished, Johnny hands it over so the audience in the hot shop can take a close look at it. Normally a flamework piece of glass would be put in an annealing oven at this point. The annealer holds the glass at the proper temperature, then slowly cools it over 24 to 48 hours to minimize heat stresses that could cause the piece to shatter. Gianni deliberately sacrificed this flower so the audience could see it. It fell apart soon after the demonstration ended. If you found this flameworking demonstration intriguing, why not try it yourself? We offer classes in flameworking, glass blowing, and many other kinds of glass making techniques. Check out our website for more information. You can see glass making demonstrations every day at the Toledo Museum of Art Glass Pavilion.